So they said if you put it in third and floor it. <laughs> it rolls cold. Not very well, but it does. How's it going everyone? So as you can tell, the Miata's gone and I bought a 1981 Rabbit pickup truck. It is a 1.6 diesel turbo, so it is TDI. And this thing is incredible. As far as I know, this is just about the only pickup they actually made. And I'm not really counting the Volkswagen van truck thing they made back in probably the 70s or whatever, but this, when it comes to mini trucks, this is probably about as mini as it gets. Here's an 1100 Honda Shadow. There's the broken Magna, and I guess I'll get into a video about that. But yes, here's an 1100 Shadow next to this thing. So I sold the Miata. It was in too good of a condition, and I really didn't have an opportunity to drive it much. I also wanted something that I could, you know, use as kind of a utility car. Because even though I have a brand new car, I use it as a commuter and it's not very fun and it takes, it has sucked all the fun out of driving. So I want something I can have that's more fun. Here's the handle. This is the little, little handle thing right here. You can get about two fingers in there. That's all the room you get. Here's the door panel. The cars need to be replaced. They're a bit rough. Yes, all black. The seams aren't great. I do have a manual that's almost completely useless. There's almost no light in here either, so even if I turn the car on or truck, you wouldn't be able to see very much. Here's the shifter. That's very it's very dark, I apologize, but here's here's how the shifter is right now. It is unusable. It's almost a guessing game at this point trying to determine what gear I'm in and trying to go into first or reverse. I have almost grinded a couple times, which isn't great, but I have a new shift linkage kit for under there. So let's pop the hood real quick. The way to open these is there's a little handle down here and you just pull it straight down. Yeah, I just reclosed it. So there's a few things that, oh, there's one thing I've already done. And it's the only shiny bit in here. The alternator I have replaced, but the belt is, uh, or both belts, there's one right down there. That is, uh, they're both kind of dry rotted, so that's an issue. And uh, the biggest issue is the shift linkage is this. And here's just, it just moves loosely right now, which is terrible. Let's see if I can get a better. Yeah, this right here. Ugh. So that's what that's for. I'm gonna be replacing all that in the future. Other than that, the the body seems fine. There's none almost, actually as far as I can tell, almost no rust under here whatsoever. Maybe some surface rust, but nothing, nothing major. I, uh, there's like a small dent on the side there, which I'm sure I might be able just to push straight out. Now, I don't know what happened here, and you can't really see it on, oh, maybe you can see it on camera, but someone, something happened in the bed. And someone decided the best way to do it was to paint brush the back of it. So, I mean, it's holding up. It does have a trailer hitch. I don't know what you're gonna pull with 55 horsepower. And uh, the tires are dry rotted, so that's pretty good. And there's also, the bed's pretty, pretty mint, if I'm honest. One right side of the window is tinted, so that's nice for, no one who's gonna drive in this thing as well. But the uh, only bad spot is whatever this is. Looks like someone left a battery sitting there and kind of got through. There's the there's the old alternator. But yeah, this is my new project car. Miata's gone. Someone else is actually enjoying it for the car that it is. And I got a car or truck, sorry, that I can actually use because the amount of work that needs to be done to this thing isn't too difficult 
it just needs a lot of love. Let's see if I can find anything on the inside again. I did vacuum it just a smidge, so that's pretty nice. That's just my dirt, not the old person's dirt. There was a dead snake in here, so that's pretty cool. I got some wipes to add about $100 to this car as well. It's got some nice seat covers. The seats under here are actually very good. It has a oil pressure gauge and a turbo gauge. Both I can find are completely useless because everything I need is in that dash. It is missing some panels, but it did come with those. They were in the back, but they're now inside the house for when I need it. The roof is in great shape, but the inside of the roof, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's not quite right. I don't think it's supposed to be plywood stapled to the top. The only other issue I can think of is I have no experience whatsoever with diesel engines. So any help or any advice in the comments would be fantastic. I am going to do some, uh, slight cleaning. There's the little turbo back there. God, it works so hard. And ooh, it does have AC, but I think it might have been in a slight accident because I don't know if you can quite tell, but the fins on the, there's a, there's a good view on it. That's not dirt. Those are folded fans or whatever you want to call them. I don't know. Everything works. Well, not everything. AC doesn't work, but it does have AC. It does. I need to figure out how to get that to work though. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a bit there where it feeds into, but someone kind of filled that in with, I have no idea. There's no rust on the inside. Someone must have fixed that or something of the sort. Not too bad, I don't think. I do have a lot of plans. I only have so many funds, so a lot of this is going to be DIY, so I'm going to try and change the belt at the most, maybe give it a quick drive around and kind of show y'all what this thing is like. Well, it's the next day. The uh, belt I needed was uh, out. Didn't actually have it. Here's a little view of what the old belt looked like and the new belt. This one was kind of bad, but not as bad as the alternator belt. It was just, there was nothing. No wonder it was squealing, look at that. Nothing. And now I have lights, so I can actually uh, show y'all what I'm doing. Basically, the way I took, the way I took this one off, there's a bolt back here. I loosened this as well, and a nut right there and here. And then it just kind of moves all around freely. First, I'm gonna put this back on. Kind of sits right around that belt. much better. And I'll tighten that up whenever I put the uh, the new belt on for the AC, which doesn't work, but runs everything else and I prefer it not to squeak. So this one's, the way I got this one off, by the way, the previous person seemed to cut a few of those off for whatever reason. So I don't know what that's about. I basically kind of just forced this off by like wedging it with a wrench and then kind of popped it off one of the, uh, of the bearings. My main issue is, as you can tell, there's a little sensor sticking straight out right there. That is maybe eighth of an inch away from that little spinny wheel. And it makes putting this on kind of a pain. So I guess I'll try and show fighting that real quick. Oh, turns out if you just bend it down and put this right over and then bend it back up, you can get it right on. I'm going to put the belt on all of them except for this. I'm going to wedge it onto this one. I'm sure there's a easier way to do this, but I'm not skilled enough, so some of y'all are going to find this really cringy. Oh God. Oh God, there's got to be an easier way to do this. So the belt's on down here. It's a little, little crooked, but I uh, don't think that'll be an issue. All I got to do is prop this one up, use something to kind of hold it. Hold it in place. I'll just do it by hand first. Just to hold it. This is still a little looser than what I'd like. Oop. Oh, yep, that's fine. Okay. New belt's on. Let's start it up. Hopefully the squealing is gone. It is very loud, by the way. Not moving a whole bunch. Pretty, pretty straight. So usually when I start this, this little battery light comes on and when I rev it, give it a little bit of a reverse. Well, I think the squealing is gone. Oop, lamp fell. Let's give it a small test ride real quick. Talk a little bit more about it. a bump. Oh. 
So it may or may not have been a couple of months since the last time you just saw that, that footage. I have not done anything to this truck. All I've done is kind of drive it around, use it for truck things. But other than that, I am going to hold off on doing any uh, work until I can actually record it and kind of show the progress of what I want to do for this thing. And I've given it some thought and I've kind of figured out what I actually want to do to this thing. And kind of giving you an idea of also what this thing sounds like is, is as I kind of talk about what I want to do. So as you can tell, it's stock suspension, so it's a little loud in here. It's a little loud in this truck. Come on, where's first? Come on, first. First, there we go. So I've, I've realized exactly what I want end goal for this truck to be. I want to be able to take this truck just about anywhere, so it, no, it needs to be reliable, but like long-term reliable, not just drive it around, fix it up, and then keep driving it. I want to be able to use this truck to be able to put motorcycles in the back so I can bring more, more projects home in the future. I am probably going to lower it and make, okay, this, the shifter needs to be fixed. It's impossible to find the gears. Ooh, it's also manual steering because there's no, uh, not manual steering, what is it? There, there's no power steering. It is manual steering, I don't know. I'm gonna fix the bed up, uh, new carpet. I have new carpet in, new suspension I'm gonna be putting in here soon. Get rid of that buzzing noise that's in the back there. That's not the camera, that's like, whatever that material is, uh, window tint. I'd like to get rid of the window tint so I can, I wanna put new window tint in here, but I need to get rid of the old one as well. Uh, the fun thing about this truck is when I need to make a turn to get out of here I need to make sure I have a clearing because it is very very slow That's five miles an hour in first gear 25 Into third 35 into fourth gear And then fifth gear or the economic gear for this thing is is basically unusable. It, the speed you need to hit is almost impossible for this truck to get to in the first place, so I almost never use it. We'll try my best to also keep off from using this thing on the highway because it's almost terrifying on the highway. It can't keep up with traffic at all. And right now, trying to find first gear is actually impossible. I'm, I have to fight with it every single time. I'm still not in gear. Still not in gear. <laughs> Where's the first gear? Come on, damn it. <laughs> Holy shit. Come on, first. Oh, that's third. Come on. God. God damn it. Oh, that's reverse. Yeah, this is what I'm fixing first. Well, I'll try and figure out how to get this thing home. Why is first next to reverse? Whose idea was that? This is, that's not it. Oh, well, I'll leave it here. That's kind of my ideas for this thing. This is kind of the current state of it. It's not in bad shape but there's a lot that can be improved. I'll see you on the next video, everyone. Stay grim.